The biggest problems we face today for VR is the lack of innovation for hardware and software design. I don't like how a lot of games from big studios are broken and feel like a cash grab or having indie developers, no offense, that have games that are only in early access for 5 plus years until the hype for it dies down. And not to mention, Meta has a big grip on the VR industry and has hardware limitations that are the same as a low-end PC from 2012. Now don't get me wrong, I think we're advancing in VR on both ends of hardware and software, but right now we're in a big drought. And one of these issues that puts us into that is that devs do not understand that VR is vastly different from a flat screen game. Now I don't have a problem with porting games to VR, but at what point would I want to do that when I could play the game on the flat screen to begin with? Not to mention, flat screen games are built vastly different than VR games. And because we're so used to flat screen games, we think that we can just put a game into VR and call it a day. But they're wrong. See, when you play VR games, you're the controller. You use buttons to pick up items or hold items with your arms or hands, but to an extent, that also means you're moving your body a lot of the time and it's exhausting to continuously do that for one to three hours every time you play VR. Try playing Blade and Sorcery for three hours straight and tell me you're not sweating. But that's the issue. Games don't understand how much time you have, but instead only care about the time you decide to put into it. Now, I'm gonna throw a little shade here and it's more specific towards the genre, not the game. But Ghost of Tabor, an extraction shooter that is based on realism, makes me want to throw my headset off and burn it because why would I want to put three hours into a game just to only get halfway to a trader level. And that brings up the point that games like these and that are similar have no real understanding of players' lives outside of gaming. That pushes people away from playing VR. Because why would you want to put yourself through that exhausting and high energy consuming session where there's no real reward that feels good for putting in your effort into games like these for only one to three hours? Now, to contradict myself here, I do get that immersion for VR is very important. There should be a balance of immersion with good gameplay design that thinks about the user outside of the game. Thinking about accessibility, ease of access, and easy for players to get going while having the headset on. And speaking of thinking about users, Meta is a problem too. Now, I won't go into detail about this because others have already dived deep into it, but I do want to touch up on exclusives and games on the standalone headsets can make games worse because of the limitations we have now in hardware. Have y'all seen the gameplay for Hitman 3 in VR? God, it makes me think that this was released on the N64, but at least the N64 had games that were built enough to be polished. But that's the point. Because of the market of standalone headsets being absurdly big in comparison to PC VR headsets or VR in general, it pushes devs who want to make a game worth playing need to put it onto a meta headset for them to break even. That not only puts pressure on making games of the same quality as if it were on PC, but they would have to dumb it down fully for it to even run on standalone headsets above 36 FPS or even 72. It also makes it feel like a waste of money to buy a standalone headset because they only have so much power to them and the cost is the exact same amount as an Xbox or a PlayStation 5 that at this point buying a VR headset is just like a console, but it has worse hardware. Which is why I think the PSVR 2 failed because it costs another 500 on top of the 500 you spent on the PlayStation 5. So what's the point if I could use that money to buy a PC to play most games that I enjoy? Now, I feel like there's a solution that I don't think people are really talking about, and I feel like I just made this up like three hours ago. Someone else could have made it up like previously, but I think there should be a mod or an app that allows you to play VR games with the power of your console. I'm not talking about making a VR specific headset for a console, but an app that allows you to have any headset to use with your console that you have for power. Imagine this, you can play VR games with PC graphics and FPS 
with an Xbox, PlayStation, or even a Nintendo Switch. Maybe not a Nintendo Switch, that thing is not as powerful. I would say it's very similar to Steam Link, but instead of Steam Link, it's like a universal app for every single console out there so you can play whatever game that you want to play on that console. Now, obviously, there would be some issues, for example, licensing to Xbox and PlayStation and other console developers out there to be able to get that app running on there. But I would think that if you're able to put that onto consoles, it would expand VR indefinitely because a lot of people have consoles more than they have VR headsets and you wouldn't be limited on the VR headset standalone processor unit so you don't get those FPS stutters or have graphics that look like a fucking potato. Now I'm not smart enough to make it work or design the code for it but I hope that someone from a big company, Xbox or PlayStation, can make this work. Seriously, I think it would be the right direction because then everyone can have an affordable way to play VR games without it being such a hassle to try to buy a PC or trying to use the standalone headsets. Now, there could be issues I cannot see because it's something I just came up with about three hours ago, but I want to know your thoughts about this drought in VR. Do you think it's going to get better from here or do you think VR is too much of a niche that for anyone to try out or play with? Let me know in the comments down below and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Deuces. Take care, everyone.